So similarly, so now we're in acidic conditions with the nitron. So what can we do with the nitron in acidic conditions? Similarly, if we're in acidic conditions, what's the first step going to be? So this is that cyanohydrin. How are we going to turn a, essentially the gist of this is we're turning a nitrile into a carboxylic acid. To do that, we're going to need some acid or we need water. We're actually going to need two waters. How do, I know, how do I know we need two waters? Well, there's two new oxygens. So I must need, the only place I'm getting oxygen from is water. So I must need two of those. So I must have to add twice. Also notice this carbon, if I label it, you know, just give it a little star. It's, of course, this carbon. This carbon has three bonds to nitrogen. This carbon has three bonds to oxygen. So it's that same kind of oxidation state. Right? Similar in that case. So we're looking for those bonds to heteroatoms. Okay, so the first step, we're in a set of conditions, will be what? Protonation, right? So we're going to protonate this. This is going to make this carbon of the nitrile that much more reactive which we've seen before with carbonyls, right? Cool. Same difference, same idea. Of course, just because the nitrogen has a plus charge, is the nitrogen electron deficient? Well, no. The hydrogen and the carbon attached to the nitrogen is. So now, second step in these reactions, the first step was protonation in acidic conditions. The second step, of course, is just going to be additions. So we add in. So we break a pi bond. Awesome. Always being very careful to, of course, balance our charges. Oxygen has a plus charge. Well, we just add the oxygen, so we need to do what? We need to do a proton transfer because, right? We don't want. You don't need the. We don't need to go backwards, right? These are all equilibrium arrows, of course. But we're trying to move forward. We know what we're trying to get to. So we need to keep adding oxygen to that carbon. So we need to get rid of the nitrogen. So we're going to do a proton transfer to make that a better leaving group. Very good. Awesome. Now, if you look at this, it's like, well, wait a second. This isn't as simple as before because now, again, this is a this is protonated, which makes it more reactive, but it's not a leaving group yet because now it still has two bonds there, right? So we need to lose one of those bonds, but we also know we need to, from our initial thinking, we need to add water again. And right, water is the solvent, so we can just have things in the bottom of the arrow are solvents. So this is have another water come in. And react. All right. So the water reacted with the carbon of the iminium kind of type of thing, the electrophilic carbon, broke the pi bond. So we add it in. Now we have the positively charged oxygen. I mean, we got a lot. There's a lot going on. In this poor little carbon, right? This poor carbon, right? But again, if you look at it, it had it started with three bonds to nitrogen, three bonds to a heteroatom, and it still has one, two, three bonds, right? We're not, we're not changing the oxidation state. We're not adding chromium. We're not adding H minus, right? We're just kind of moving things around and switching from a nitrile to a, a carboxylic acid. So to do this, right, now we're back here, of course, we could go backwards, but we want to do another proton transfer to make the nitrogen a better leaving group. So let's do a proton transfer. All right, there you are. Now we can do this quick if we want to. We can do this last final step. Now we have a good leaving group. Now we finally have that tetrahedral intermediate, right? We kind of got to that tetrahedral intermediate finally. Well, you can do it. You can say it doesn't matter which oxygen you pick. Let's say that OH bond breaks. Electrons come down. That knocks out the NH3. So this H becomes the H plus. It's a catalyst. Again, I would always let you know there's your catalyst that got reformed in that step. And you made, actually it's going to be a one-way arrow now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why is it going to be a one-way arrow? Because we of course made our carboxylic acid, and I'll draw it the way I have it there so you can kind of see it. We also made... 
NH3, which of course is a gas. And so that's going to bubble out of the solution and we stuck there. And we also, of course, made H plus. Circle it there. There's that H. That's where that H plus came from.